Hey everyone, we're going to take a quick break and talk about our sponsors for the month, Amp Agency. Amp is a full-service digital marketing agency that specializes in tour, rental, and destination marketing. We would not have sponsors on the show if we could not vouch for them ourselves. Amp Agency does a bunch of stuff for Destiny Water Adventures. Personally, I 100% vouch for this guy. I've I've handed them over to other companies in the past before they officially became a sponsor, and they have had nothing but great things to say. If you guys are doing your own marketing and doing a piss poor job of it, do yourselves a favor, hand yourselves over to AMP Agency, specifically Steve Edwards, their CEO, will call you personally and have a great conversation with, with you about what you guys need to do for your marketing. Listen guys, they do pretty much everything in digital marketing, website development, maintenance, Google AdWords, PPC, graphic design, social media management, SEO, and a myriad of other things. When you choose a marketing company, it's so important to choose a company that knows your industry. And AMP Agency knows activity marketing, especially water sports and tours. They got a promo going for Awkward Water Sport Guy listeners for their their managed websites. Use promo code Awkward Podcast when you go to AMP.agency. Again, that's AMP.agency, promo code Awkward Podcast. You get three months free and get started with AMP Agency. All right, guys, let's get back to the show. Guys, welcome to another wonderful episode of the AWG show. Today, we have a special guest, buddy of mine, great sales dude. His name is Doug Mitchell. We met at an event, and I know I've been hammering sales to the ground, but I thought, what a better idea than to bring someone on at sales is like their whole life, and they sell they can tell, I'm not going to, I'm just going to stop talking. I can't do this guy enough justice than, than he can do himself. Doug, how you doing, brother? I'm doing good. Thanks for having me, man. Yeah, man. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for coming on. How's business? It's great. Uh, so a little bit, I guess, background on me. I've been yeah. in uh, sales for 13 years now. I had a, uh, a sales org for 12 of those years. And what a sales org Wait, is, what? is like a, a sales org. I'm sorry. Yeah. Sales organization. Is my audio still ah. coming in kind of rough? No, Ke- no Kevin I'm thought just... you said sales orc, like in uh, I thought, Lord I of thought Rings, sales and he orc. thought it was, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he thought you were like, well, we, we, we. <laughs> I thought you said anyway. sales award. I was like, what, what? You got sales awards, bro? I love it. Let me no, know. no, sales orc, like the orcs in, in Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Let's go. Yeah, he had, he, had a, he had a call. He had a call center. We're on sale. But bunch of orcs. Okay, anyways, go ahead. I'm a dork. So a sales organization. <laughs> <laughs> and so basically, we sold for AT and T, Vivint. We sold B two B, telemarketing, and so people paid us to sell their product. So that's all we did, right? And so I had to develop uh, sales programs for different products over and over again. And so we're talking compensation plans, opportunity structures, um, you know, uh, people uh, put people in the right seat, that whole situation for uh, sales programs, as well as, you know, develop the people that I had, make sure that operations were running smoothly in terms of fulfillment, you know, holding my clients uh, accountable to the, the sales that we were bringing them. And then, of course, culture, which was the hugest piece, I would say, and, and those first for really pouring into culture. And so I did that for, for 12 years and um, I joined a few mastermind groups and they kept asking the same questions over and over again. How do you do this? How do you do that? You know, uh, it, it was crazy because I was in rooms of, you know, seven, eight, nine figure earners and I felt like I was an imposter, but they were coming to me asking me questions about their sales program. Mm-hmm you know, or how to, how to uh, set up a comp plan or how, how do I recruit the best people or whatever the case is. And so uh, after a while I realized, Hey, I've got a product here, I've got a business. So I started doing a, a side hustle as a consultant and it kind of took off from there. And uh, that's what I do full time now. I'm a sales program consultant. Hey, Hey Doug. So um, here's, here's what, here's how I'd like to, uh, to sort of move this along today, because our audience is so marketing centric, most of our listeners are like phone sales, door knocking, 
Like, yeah. that's all gone. That doesn't exist anymore. There's no such thing as sales. Now, I'm definitely inflating that a little bit. But right. in our industry, like, like Greg mostly focuses on online conversions. Historically, I focus on online conversions. This show started off very much as a digital marketing, how to sell your product, sans you. And then when I learned a little bit that I was sort of losing a lot of bottom line revenue, lost calls, lost sales. I really drilled in on sales. Um, I help one of my business partners sponsor the show. Um, so like, let's reduce this down. Like, like, let's, like, like, let's explain sales. Like we're explaining it to one of our kids. Okay. So one thing I do want to point out though, is no matter what, what happens once the marketing gets the interest, there's a conversation happening at that point. And whether it's through AI, a chat bot, or it's, it's through the website, whatever the case is, that conversation needs to have a structure to it, right? And that's what a lot of people miss out with sales is a lot of people have a natural sales ability and they become business owners. They think, or they don't realize that they have a natural sales ability, which is really just being a, a likable person, right? And when that happens, they, they feel like, oh, well, everybody should be able to do this. Just watch me do it. And then you can do it, you know, and there's no structure behind it. And so I believe that anybody that can walk and chew gum can, can sell something no matter what it is. You know, the product knowledge curve is the only thing that's going to slow them down on that. Right. And so, and I believe that because I, I, I did it for the past 12 years, you know, we recruited close to a thousand salespeople in my 12 year career. And I never found one that I felt like, oh, you can't do sales because of the structure. So uh, a simple structure to follow. And this is a, the conversation again, can start on the website. It can start in messenger and then it can end up on the phone or it can end up in email, whatever the case is, right? If that conversion hasn't happened yet and you're still trying to give it, get that conversion to happen, whether it's through your copy or through uh, an actual conversation, you need to have a, a structure in place. And the, and the first piece of that structure is the intro, right? Who you are, what do you do, you know, and why you're here, you know, and whether it's why they're on your site or it's um, why you're calling them on the phone or talking to them in person, whatever the case is, right? You establish that and then you go right into uh, a little rapport building after that, right? And so if it's on a website, it may, it may have messaging like, okay, what is it about water sports that we all love? And then messaging that conversation onto the website. If it's in a chat conversation, it's like, well, what inspired you to reach out to us in the first place, right? So there's uh, two methodologies behind this. One is catch and then one is qualify, which is the next step in the conversation. In the catch methodology, it, it is the why question that brings out the pain points for the customer, right? And so... People buy for two reasons. You know, they're running towards pleasure or pain, one or the other, right? In y'all's case, it's most likely pleasure, right? And so the reason that they reached out is because they want to have a badass time on the water, you know? And so, and specifically, they're going to say how they think they're going to do that, right? And so when you're listening to the, to the qualify part, you establish that, okay, that's one of your... And this is just, the, you guys are going to have fun with this. This is uh, a pleasure point, right? I normally talk about pain points, but with y'all in industry, it's all about having a good time, right? So we'll call it a good point for the sake of getting through this conversation. No, pleasure right, point's so. fine, man. I love it. <laughs> I'm so turned on. All right, so we got, we got one pleasure point, right? And so we need usually two or three more to really sell this customer, okay? And so... We can, we can qualify the customer without them doing it themselves, right? So we can bring in some other clients like, you know, what, what are some of the services you, you guys offer, Kevin? Uh, you know, boat rentals, jet ski tours, mm -hmm. kayak rentals, sunset cruises with captains. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have a myriad of things. Greg, I mean, Greg's, dude, Greg's got way more offerings than I do. Okay. So, yeah. Uh, go ahead, Greg. Well, I don't, so yeah, well, we, we sell pretty much everything Kevin does, but we have hundreds of, different operators we sell for since we're a consolidate consolidator. So we're okay. a reseller. Well, 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 okay. For just for example, though, just for the audience sake, like I have a, you know, two, three people phone sales team and Greg, I mean, how many people do you have on phones at TripShock? 
Uh, it ranges between like 15 and 20. Yeah. So Greg's got basically a whole call center where I'm probably closer to owner operator guy answering the, its own right. phone. So there's some information for you. Hey guys, we're going to take a quick second, a quick break to talk about the water sports forum, which is now being rebranded as the port at arrival. That's right, Kevin. We're going to be doing our third annual water sport and boat tour operator forum now called the port from October 9th to the 12th. So let's break it down real fast. The first day, October 9th is the full day event where we're bringing speakers, host panels, do round table sessions. If you went to the year previous, you kind of understand the format. The rest of the week, we'll be partnering with the arrival conference to bring you supplemental programming in our special VIP room called Captain's Cove. Listen, I want you guys to hear me loud and clear. If you guys are listening to this show if you guys have ever come to one of our conferences before and you thought that was great this is going to be jam packed with value now i want to tell you one last thing somebody a very smart investor one told once told me that you bet on the jockey not on the pony so i'm asking you guys to bet on this conference on greg and myself on doug and bruce at arrival and know that the amount of value that you are going to extract from both of these conferences are going to be an incredible return on that investment. So let's talk pricing. A one-day ticket for the forum will run $199. This also includes lunch and our after-hours event. If you decide to stay for the arrival conference, you can purchase a combo ticket, which gives you a 15% discount on both events. Because the pricing goes up each month leading up to the event and this commercial doesn't change, please head to the watersportpodcast.com and click on 2023 conference. Again, watersportpodcast.com, click on the 2023 conference link in the menu, and then you can view the current pricing for the combo package in the arrival ticket. You also find info on lodging and programming. This year we're going to be having at the Rosen Shingle Creek, which is an awesome resort. Special guests, special guest speakers. We're going to have a lineup that is going to knock your socks off. We're going to be covering everything from assets, finance, marketing, operations. Like This is the one and done mastermind. And I don't know when we're going to be able to do something this comprehensive again. And I guarantee you, if we do, we'll be bringing the same value in a smaller group for 10 times the amount of money because it really is that valuable. Be sure to get your tickets early because you only have 125 seats. Again, watersportpodcast.com. Go to 2023 conference, and from there, you can purchase your tickets, you can purchase your combo tickets, you can purchase your lodging. Everything you need to know about the conference is on that page. If you have any questions, just reach out to Kevin or myself, go to our Facebook group, hit us up. We'd be happy to answer anything you need, and we'll see you there. Let's get back to the show. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And so, when we're qualifying the customer, we may some say something to the tune of, you know, uh, a lot of our clients like. The boat rentals, of course, but what they're finding is they rent a jet ski with it. They have a lot more fun that way. Is that something that, that you've heard of or that you've done before? You know, and so the client answers and that you may bring out another pleasure point in that conversation, right? And so by using other clients or by using previous customers, you know, however you want to frame it, you're, you're, you're suggesting experiences that they didn't suggest themselves. Right. And then you're qualifying whether or not they'd be interested in something like that. You know what I'm saying? And so it, it's also important to find out, OK, you know, who's coming on the trip, how many people, you know, these are the things that you guys normally do. Right. And so when it comes to your product, there's qualifying questions you have to answer. Right. In order to be able to uh, to present the product. But there's also the pleasure points that we talked about where. All right, I'm going to bring up these other ones that I know are top pleasure points in our industry. You know what I mean? And so we're bringing that into the conversation like, hey, this is something that could pique their interest as well. That creates upsells. You know what I mean? That creates a a higher ticket value, whatever the case is. We want to bring that into the conversation. And we do all that without actually presenting the product yet. Right. And so we identify those two or three pleasure points. We've qualified them now and we're going to transition into the presentation. Right. And so the presentation is going to be all about, all right, you know, you said this was a pleasure point for you. This is the product that we have that can service that, right? And so when we're presenting, it's all about them, you know, and probably hear this all the time. Selling is listening. 
And so during that qualification period, when we're building rapport, when we're getting those pleasure points for, from them, we really let them exhaust themselves in the conversation, right? Say everything that they want to say, you know, complain every which way that they want to complain. Let them exhaust themselves completely. Get all the information that you need in order to present them with a custom tailored product for them. Not just the same product you give everybody, not the same upsell you give everybody, but something that's tailored for them. Now, when it comes to the actual product, it may be the same thing you give everybody, but you give it to them in such a way that makes sense to them because of the qualification. Follow me here. Uh, yeah, Doug, I got a, a question for you. So sure. um, a lot of transactions in our industry happen quickly. Okay. Um, our agents don't necessarily have a lot of time to close a sale because we, you know, Kevin can attest to this between 8 a.m. and noon, we are literally we're on a 10 minute wait. So, and I, I do understand that, you know, we, if we push a customer, you know, and, and not really follow through and qualify them, like you're saying, there might be some, some meat left on the bone. Like maybe there's an opportunity to upsell them, but they're, they're in a precarious situation because uh, a lot of people, when they're calling us, they already know what they want. They're pretty, they're pretty much sold. They're qualified. And one of the things we do and it's not easy for smaller businesses to do, but if you want to make a phone call to TripShock, you have to give us your email uh, address. And what that does puts them into some workflows. If they abandon, they don't purchase, then they get put in abandonment flows. But uh, so by requiring them to do that, it does, you know, from from customer standpoint, they're, if they're not really serious, they're not going to give us all that information from that form. So it does weed out some people. So it, with saying that, that's why, you know, our, our team tries not to, to we try to move the caller along, knowing that it's a quick transaction. So that, that's a challenge. And, and Kevin might have different, uh, you know, opinion on this, but we do, we do move them. <laughs> do. We move them out. You know, it's just, I, I don't, it, it, we could be on the phone for 30 minutes and miss five other hot calls. And then we end up booking a $50 dolphin cruise that nets us $10 commission. So, so right. So on the finance, I want to jump in here because this is super important for our listenership. And so like to Greg's point, let's just say Greg's paying that person $15 an hour. He's running a one hour jet ski. You guys, if your customers are trip shock, you know, you're, Greg's not getting 99% of that sale. He's getting whatever it may be, 20%, 90%, 30%, 15%. I've, I don't even know what Greg charges me. I actually got to dig into my books. But, you know, the point being is that it's like, yeah, if he spends a phone, uh, $15 on the phone for an hour to make $15, I mean, it's definitely a, a net loss. So for a, and to that point, like this is where I lean into you guys and I'm up here with Doug, agreeing with Doug, because for me, if it is a, you know, we can be on the phone for 20 minutes for a $100 purchase. I can, my, my team can be on the phone for an hour for a $400 purchase because we are doing the things that Doug is doing. So at the end of the day for Greg, he has to operate from this, like maybe like overseas call center where I am engaging in the principles that Doug's talking about. And, and so the things he's talking about, or if, if you guys are avid listeners to the show, or if you guys go to arrival, You've heard me speak about. You've heard me t- t- with the microphone in my hand. And if you go to the water sport conference, you guys have heard me talk about this shit, right? So, with the with with the uh, with with Greg's product, it's a little bit a little bit different. So, like, here's a, here, I want to do a I want to do like a weird turn on you, Doug. You're, you should like this, man. You love sales. You're a good sales guy. I want to turn this. So let's just take this out of a context of call center, fifteen dollar an hour product. Or consultancy for a guy like me versus consultancy for a guy like Greg. And that's why I said, hey, if I'm an owner operator on the phone versus Greg with a call center, what would be a way that you would the difference? Okay. And this is great because we're talking about a $15 jet ski product versus a $400 boat, boat rental. Greg could potentially be a, you know, he does much more revenue than I do. So how would you sell? Your, your services to a guy like me versus Greg. And, and guys, just so I'm, we're clear here, as always, Doug has only paid us $150,000 to be on this show. So if you feel like you're getting pitched right now, it is because you are, because we're getting so rich off of the Doug Mitchell 
sales team consultancy. No, Doug <laughs> paid nothing to be here. He's a friend of mine and he provides awesome information. There has been no money exchange here. Just so we're clear here, if it sounds like a pitch, it's not. I love sales. So let's go. Sell us live, bro. Okay. So Kevin, for you, it's all about working side by side with your team. It's coming into the business and doing sales training in person and sales training that has an impact that goes deep, not just why, right? And then on the flip side, uh, I'm going to go into, uh, oh, wow. Uh, Kevin? Yeah. Did, it, did I mess that up? I'm sorry. <laughs> My brain just what? went sideways. I'm going to go into Kevin's business and it's all going to be about SOPs and systems and did processes. Did you forget my name? Right? No, uh, there? not your name. Um, <laughs> Greg, Greg, I'm sorry. <laughs> don't worry. The guy that we Dude, had yesterday, yeah. I don't even think he addressed Greg once. I feel like he felt like he was well, on the Kevin You know what podcast. it is? <laughs> most, most of these have the name in the lower left corner, so I completely relied on that, and I shouldn't have. Yeah. That's my fault. But, yeah, Greg, um, my brain finally came back online there. That's <laughs> okay. <laughs> No, anyway, we run a shitty so, podcast, dog. Sorry. No, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but for Greg, it's it's a hundred percent about the scripts and the the SOPs. Okay, mm-hmm. and so basically, we're gonna we're gonna write up a script. We're gonna dial in a script that's built for speed, a hundred percent built for speed. And like you said, to move the client along. And then what what happens is when the client tries to stop that process, we're gonna have a basically an objection handling training for that to get them through it quickly because they're all coming up with the same objections, right? They're all coming up with the same stopping points in the conversation that's slowing down my call speed. And so I need to speed it back up. So I need to train my guys on how to speed that back up basically. And that's just a very like surface level of how that's exactly what we do. We have SOPs. We, um, we have managers to kind of help you know, work with the agent to move like if someone's taking a long time, but we know it's a big lead. There's a lot of communication between the call center staff to let them know that, Hey, I got a big set. I'm on going to be on the phone longer, but I got a big sale on the line type, those type of things. And you're right. Like it's, it's SOPs, it's scripts, it's moving people along and, and then just making sure we qualify the customer before they act, they enter our call queues, and, you know, and- to make sure that it's a higher opportunity. And we, we actually find that, we only have a five uh, percent drop call. Nice. I mean, people that drop that drop off from from our call queue. It's only five percent, and I and I know that if we didn't qualify that customer by requiring them to give give more information upon, it probably would be a lot higher because you know no hey, one wants to give their information I, I, up. You know, I gotta Go pause you guys, man. Right now, you guys are you guys are glossing over some really important information because I guarantee you, there's so many operators that are listening to this right now, and they are asking themselves. What is S O P? Doug. <laughs> Sorry, we just nerded no. out for a second there, Greg. <laughs> so an SOP is a standard operating procedure, right? It's taking what's in your head, the genius that's in there, the experience that's in there, the uh sales ability that's in there, and putting it out on paper. And so while while I extract that in terms of putting it into a structure and everything, the actual Content comes from the business owner, comes from the top salesperson, comes from the existing team that's in place. And you take that and you put it into an SOP, which is a written script, right? Now, the thing the thing that I do with my SOPs in Kevin's case versus Greg's case, in Kevin's case, I'm doing bullet-pointed SOPs. These are SOPs that the salesperson comes up with the sentence themselves, right? They just know I need to cover this qualifying question, this qualifying question, and this one, but it's all in bullet points because I want them to use their own language, their own terminology, what they're comfortable with, right? Versus Greg's situation, I'm I'm going to be all about the script, follow every single word in that script exactly how we say it, and that's going to create the conversion rates that I want in the sales process, right? And that's another thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to have an, an intense metric reporting in Greg's case of all right, at which point did this conversation stop or move along faster? And I'm going to evaluate that probably on a bi-week, biweekly or monthly basis to make sure that I'm hitting those conversion rates. And then I'm going to go look at my top converters along the way, and I'm going to study what they're doing differently than the ones that aren't converting as well and start bringing them up to their level through training and 
you know, and, that, and that's the thing too is when you have high volume like that, you tend to like just do the job instead of going back and looking at what you've got along the way and then mm -hmm. implementing training based on that. So yeah, I, we, I would we say- We are really big on KPIs, key mm -hmm. performance indicators. We have about 10 of them in our call center. Uh, obviously drop calls is one of them. Uh, yeah. co conversion rate, we even track of those drop calls, how many of those drop calls convert. And since, we, since they have to become a known user, to fill out our form, we can track their journey if they decide to book. With, and, and we found out that this is why it's so important to answer the phone because of those drop calls, 90% of them do not book. That's okay. a pretty what profound number. 90% of okay. the drop calls do not book. I would imagine yeah. that, okay, they, they, they didn't get through, but they're on the website still and they'll still book. So some people think that your website and your online booking, they'll fall back on that. No, <laughs> it's their calling. They initially, they want to talk to somebody. That's how, that's their medium to, to do business with you. So if they can't get to don't think that they're just going to fall back and book online. Hey everyone, Greg here. As you may know by now, I'm the co-founder and CEO of TripShock, an online reseller for water sports and tours. For the past 12 years, we've had the pleasure of working with hundreds of operators across the country and we're looking to grow our community. It's free to sign up and you only pay when we bring you confirmed bookings. We'll help you reach new customers, fill empty seats, and grow your business like so many have done with us over the years. Head over to partners.tripshock.com to learn more about our program, read testimonials, or speak directly with our supply team. As always, thank you for listening and enjoy the show. Look, I, I gotta, I gotta say something here. So, all of you guys that are listening, and and especially you new operators out there, or operators that have hit a ceiling in your growth cycle. So, uh, something that uh, myself and and Kai Capro, who's the CEO of Tour Scale, I did a presentation, and he had one of his people ask me. It wasn't even one of their franchise people. It was one of their uh, their corporate guys. Um, Man, his name's escaping me now. The dude that cut, was cutting hair was getting the massage at that conference. What the hell is that guy? His name is completely Christian. Or I can't. It doesn't matter. Please edit this out because if he listens to it, I'm going to feel real bad. But he was like, <laughs> hey, Kevin, what's one of the main things like that you see operators not doing? Or like, what's their biggest fault in sales? And I'm like not answering their fucking phone. And then he just he did this. He like, like He was looking at all of his franchisees and he was like, like, see, like we've been telling you, like, believe it or not, dog, like, and you're like, Jesus, man, I wish I had this problem is that our phones, because of the pleasure points, our phones never stop ringing like two o'clock in the morning. And, and to that point, you guys, when these guys are, when I want to roll this back to SOP. If you guys don't have SOP in place, and this is like all, this is all the Doug. Like I, I will, at the end of the day, if you're like, I'm going to blow my, I love writing SOP. My, I love having my staff write SOP. Someone goes and takes a shit and I'm like, Hey man, let me get SOP on that. You know, like, <laughs> come on. What's up with that toilet lid? Um, we're trying to do DEI here anyway. But you know, my, my point being, I lost my fucking point. What was my point? My point being is that Doug, right? If you don't, and again, I'm not like selling Doug service or whatever. I can't tell you that Doug can give you SOP on operational jet skis and shit like that. But if at the end of the day, you're going, Hey man, my phone's ringing in at nine o'clock at night and I don't want to answer it. And I'm leaving meat on the bone and my bottom line and my top, look, dude, you need a standard operating procedure for your fucking phones. If you're leaving money on the table and then bitching about not having it come November, dude. You know what I'm saying? Like it, there's an SOP somewhere in there for whatever. If, if, I don't know. You call Doug, man. Doug will help you with this again. Like it just if you're not gonna sit down and write it, if your brain is gonna go sideways, you know, to Doug's point, like I have all of my staff write my SOPs and then they bring it to me and then we go over it. You know, but at the end of the day, if you're like sitting there, you don't have a salesperson, you don't have a whatever, it's like, well, uh, maybe, and, 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 and lately we've been having more consultants on the show, and I just want to speak to this for a second, and, and I know when you guys listen to this shit, or we all like twist our mustache and go, you know, are these guys paying, like, what is the deal, why, why is AWG all of a sudden going from, I mean, we've had a bunch of consultants, because there's areas of our business that we all suck at, like, period, except for me, I do great at everything, I'm just kidding. <laughs> 
<laughs> but there is like, you know, I do, I do pay consultants to help me with things that I know I'm not good at. I hate looking at bank statements. I hate looking at finance. I pay a consultant to help me with my investments, to help me with these things. If you dread being on the phone or you don't know how to convert or people are telling you no, or you don't know how to write SOP or what a great script looks like or what a great funnel looks like, then you know what I mean? Like come off your shoulders and I think Doug is like nineteen ninety nine a month or something. It's like twenty bucks. A month. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Doug's like deadpan looking Sounds at me. Good. Like, Sounds good. Nineteen ninety nine <laughs> for five minutes. No, I'm just kidding. I have no idea what Doug charges because we didn't have that conversation. But my my point being is so anyway with 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 getting back to this sort of five year old mentality. Mm-hmm. Doug, where do you see guys getting it wrong? Like I'm going to pose the same question to you that was posed to me. Well, they don't they don't start. You know, and it it, it, be, it it seems like this daunting process when it's really not, you know, and, and, and look, I'm a big proponent of, of VAs because they take all the busy work out of your life, right? And so anytime that I'm going to put together an SOP, all I do is I jump on Loom, which is a, a, a video recording product that you can record the site that you're on or the tab that you're on, and you're able to see your face and and do a video recording there. And so you can literally jump on Loom and have a conversation with the customer, send that co- uh send that recording out to a VA, have them transcribe it, you know what I mean, and and put the steps in place of the conversation and you've got the bare bones of an SOP, right? Um there's several different ways you can do this. You can just record record a conversation or record yourself going through the structure of your 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 sale, right? Just writing down step 1 through step 10 whatever the case may be, you know, it, it, it reminds me of, because you were talking about, Hey, I'm the, I'm the only salesperson. Right. And so my, my wife actually just started a, a tutoring business. It's a brick and mortar location, right? Homeschool parents bring in their kids and she tutors them on the subjects that they're struggling in. Right. A lot of times parents can't be the teacher for everything. They could be the teacher for three things and this fourth thing they're struggling with. So they bring, they bring their kids into her and she helps them out. Right. And so she's starting this business and she comes to me basically like, all right, I know you're going to bring this up. I need a sales process, right? So what she does, she goes into Facebook groups, right? And she assists people in those groups. She gives them value. She puts out um, different videos on, on how to teach certain subjects and whatever the case is, right? And then they reach back out to her and that becomes a lead. You know what I mean? They're like, hey, what about your tutoring services? You know, so that, so that becomes a lead. So the conversation that we had at that point was one, let's walk through, let's create a script, an intro, a qualify, a presentation, and a close, right? And if we qualify properly, we'll present really well, and we won't really need a close. It'll just be next steps, right? And so we developed the script, and, and I'm like, do you guys have money for a CRM? No, we don't have any money, <laughs> all right? Well, let's pull up a Google Sheet, and let's put our clients in the Google Sheet, you know what I'm saying, or our leads in the Google Sheet, and then... Each each uh, column in that sheet is a, a a contact point that you're reaching out and you put notes in there about how many times you contacted them and then you put an SOP together for that. All right, every lead that comes in, I'm going to reach out to them right away. We're going to have a conversation. I'm going to try and schedule a, a presentation or an appointment, and then uh, I'm going to reach out to them. Maybe I'm going to do two two twos. Right, I'm going to reach out to them in two days, two weeks, two months, whatever the case is, just to keep that conversation going. You know. And that is a sales process SOP, right? And so those are three things that you can do. The script, the CRM, and the uh, sales process you can put in place right away, but you've got to start somewhere, you know, and there's all different ways you can hack it. You know what I mean? There's dictation software as well as uh, if you uh, Upwork is another one, or if you have a VA VA already, then you should be doing this from the get-go. I I just want to... make a point about um loom the the video recording service loom is an incredible tool it's so easy to use they have a brow a, a browser app that you can quickly make and what i like most about it is that my employees will will send me videos and i got some employees that live in eastern europe and they don't speak great english well i you know it takes a lot for them to, to say what they need to say so i just put it in 2x speed and listen to that video so fast. I mean, it's it's so good for productivity. 
and you can quickly make them. You can, I mean, you can document a lot of your SOPs. You can create like a video log of whatever you, you want to, you know, get to your team. But I have used that countless times for SOPs and, and other, and other things, just showing my team if I'm finding things, you know, issues on the site. But that, that tool has been one of the single most, uh, valuable, um, things for productivity for, for, for my business. And it's not expensive. Any, any, any small businesses can afford it. Um, it actually you get 25 videos for free. So I highly recommend them. Use, use promo code AWG when <laughs> checkout and loom for you. Like, we why should. don't we do we We are so terrible. Like, I, I mean, we really like, we don't, we have no promo codes. Like we do have some sponsors, <laughs> but it's just, we're so, it's so look, I want to ask you about that too, because I, I want to move over to the Doug Mitchell personal brand, which is like, I like either you are the greatest sales guy that I know, which could possibly be, or you really are genuine and don't give a shit about the money and the hustle culture. Like I get this vibe from you that like you've done pretty well in all of your past businesses and you love doing this and you love seeing people succeed. And I feel like, you are one of the few guys that come from these groups that have vision first, money second. Is that true? And if look, if money comes first, that's fine. I have no problem yeah. say that shit. But I mean, you do come across to me as a genuine article, man. And and what a sort of cult, how have you cultivated that and a little bit of backstory on how you came to be here, dude? Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that. First off, you recognizing that that's that's massive for me and that's what I want 100%. And I tricked you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's 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 a hundred percent that way. I spent ten years in my business all about the numbers. And we had a saying in my business which was body count equals bank account, right? And we made a lot of money. We did over thirty five million a year in commissions in over over the ten year or twelve years that I operated my sales work and understand that that's commissions. That's not gross sales, that's not, you know, fulfillment involved. That that's just straight what they paid us for selling the product, right? And so we were about that life for a long time, right? And what happens is when you're about that life in your business, it, it bleeds over into your personal life and it becomes about the numbers and the accomplishment and conquering things. You know what I mean? And for me, uh, you know, I had a chip on my shoulder from my childhood. I had mommy and daddy issues. I had the, the, the combo pack, right? And so, and so I had this chip on my shoulder. I have something to prove and I, I prove it by the time I'm like 26. You know, we had hit 5 million in one year. I had over 110 salespeople, 13 offices. I was traveling around the country, all the things, right? And so it's like, now what? Now how do I fill this, you know, gaping hole in my soul, right? And so, of course, I did what all dumb men do. And I went to partying and uh, being unfaithful to my wife and, uh, you know, buying material things, whatever the case was. You know, and so I did that for a few years. You know, I got right with God after a couple of years, but I didn't tell my wife. Eventually, a couple of years later, she found out on her own, which is never good. Right. And so the whole thing came crashing down. And here's the crazy part. During all of this, my business did better, which makes yeah. no sense. Right. Well, and so money, I, money was coming first, right? Right. It, it came money first, over so everything. All, yeah. All that, all that work. And so I was leaving Corpus Christi. I was traveling to San Antonio and I was driving in my car and in my head, I'm, I'm looking at my life just fall apart. I don't give a shit about the business anymore. I've got three kids. I've got a, a, a wife that we're separated now about to be divorced. And, um, I'm like, this is not what I had planned for my life. I was supposed to be I was supposed to be the one that changed it. And, you know, my biological father was an alcoholic and unfaithful. My, uh, my mother was an, was, uh, unfaithful as well. You know what I mean? And so she went through like three marriages. And so I was like, I was supposed to be different and I ended up being the same thing. Money aside, I'm the same freaking thing. You know what I mean? And so I'm driving to San Antonio and I'm like, look, having this conversation with myself and God and I'm like, Look, moving forward, I'm going to be a man of integrity. I'm going to be honest about all this shit that I fucked up in my 20s so that other people can learn from it. And then moving forward, I'm going to be brutally honest about everything, whether it's on social media, whether it's me and you in person, Kevin or Greg, or whether it's on the phone, doesn't matter. I'm the same person everywhere I go. 
And then I also knew in my head, if I'm ever going to have a real relationship again and, and be able to get married again and, and have a spouse that trusted me, I'm going to have to be honest from the first date. Right. So on every first date, I, so we divorced, right. And we started dating other people on every first date I took after that, the first, in the first conversation, I told him my history. I told him exactly what happened, who I was and what I was coming from, you know, and it, after, Sounds like a party, it, man. Sounds like a great it, first. Listen, sales advice yeah. takes dogs out. Like, don't, maybe not first dating advice. Do not listen to dog. It hey, worked, look, man, I'm yeah. on Oxycontin right now. It, it had a reverse effect. It was so refreshing to them. They just, like, wanted to jump into bed with me. It was crazy. But anyways. God, God I need to right, I'm hiring aside. you right now, bro. I'm hiring you right now. It, it, it had the first M&M dates. effect. Like, you know what? great. You know, at the end of Eight Mile, when he <laughs> when he tells him everything, he's like, "This is everything that's wrong with me." It worked, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, anyways, Eight Mile yourself. So, thankfully, thankfully, uh, she was able to forgive me. We were able to reconcile, and we actually just got remarried about six months ago. You know what I mean? So, I went from living a that's certain awesome, way. Man. Yeah, I appreciate that. And so, I, I did the same thing as you, though. I I got into these mastermind groups. I got into these organizations. And it was like a constant barrage of bullshit at the lower levels. You get to the medium level and there was some, some real ones in there. And then you get the top level and there was a lot of real ones in there, you know? And I started really appreciating the relationships that I was building and then the impact that I was making, whether I was paid or not, you know? And that's the thing. I came in with the sales org running and gunning. So I didn't need anybody in the groups in order to make money. I was able to just give, give, give. And I did that for two years until I became a full-time consultant. And then they could all give me their money after that, right? But I think because I started that way, that it, it, it it's a natural setting for me. It's like, hey, I have these. And, and that's my whole deal too is I'll give it away. But if you don't want to do the work, then you can pay me to do it. I'll give the game away. You know what I'm saying? Like this is this is what you need to have set up. You need to... The greatest sales teams have five parts, right? The first part is compensation. Is it in writing? Is it simple? Is it comparable? Is it worth the work? Is your competition paying more? Are they not? And then is it, is it scalable? Are they able to make six figures? If they're not, then we've got an issue, right? And I don't mean at the entry level. I mean they can move up in the company and make six figures. So the second part is opportunity, right? Opportunity, again, is the opportunity in writing for your salespeople, for your call center people? I don't care if it's a $15 an hour position. Do they have an opportunity to move up to the next level? And can they visually see it? And can they not just see it on paper, but the, can they see it in the offices? Can they see it in, in the, the retail shops? Can they see it people actually being promoted or actually getting the opportunities that you're pitching to them? And do they have ownership in the development of the company, right? So you say your, your salespeople send you SOPs all the time. Are we giving them credit for those SOPs at the bottom of the page? You know what I'm saying? Are we, are we saying, hey, so-and-so and so-and-so helped develop this SOP? One of the things we used to do is make them authors on the training, and we put their names at the bottom, created by Doug Mitchell, Wayne Skinner, Ralph Ramon. You know what I'm saying? These were, these were three of the top key players in my company that developed a lot of my training. It wasn't just me. You know, I, I was very good at structuring things, but they were good at coming in with – the NLP type stuff or like the one liners or, you know what I mean? They were, they're very good at the language. Right. And so after that, so it's compensation, opportunity development, and then operations. If your salespeople go out and double your sales tomorrow, can you even fulfill them? Are you ready for that? If you need to be, do you have a contingency plan? If they knock it out of the park, if they start selling nothing but your premium product, because you've developed your sales program so well that, everybody's getting upsold, do you have enough premium product to go around? And so operations is a huge piece of that. And then can you bring in new salespeople so they actually have an opportunity to train new people, move up in the company and make an impact in other people's lives? And then the last piece is culture. Those, four, those first four pieces feed that culture. But again, is that culture in writing? Are you taking the time to spend time with your people? Are you doing a team night every couple of weeks? Are you creating competition within the company, gamifying the results? You know, and then your mission and your core values. I know it's beats death, 
but it's beat to death for a good reason because it works. Not, not in right? not in our not in our group, dude. Like this, you got to okay. understand, like where we're like what we're talking about over and over there versus what's being talked about inside of our place. Like these are all all of our operators in our group are all mom and pop shop, like passion driven lifestyle businesses like like yeah there's money in jet skis there's money in boats kayaks and water sports is like an incredible amount right but also at the same time people come to this because they love it right they they jet skis boats like they are all we're all pleasure guys like there is no oh man do you hate your life like no dude i'm a captain on a boat i love it i just want to make more money and i want to scale and run the show or make my own schedule whatever what have you so the core values piece and kpis and sops this is all lost i'm not going to say on all of our audience but a large majority of of them are not writing sops they're right now they're like going they're googling like va they're going to end up at like the va hospital near them because they don't know that (laughs) va stands for virtual assistant and they're like how does that work in my organization because i'm pushing boats and jet skis but i promise you there's so much hr and administrative duties that you're beating your head against the wall and fucking your sales up because you don't want to answer the phone because you're busy doing that when you could be paying a va six bucks an hour to handle some of that stuff for you because you're trying to juggle every single ball in your organization and spoiler alert you're doing a piss poor job at it period and that is the difference between a guy like doug and greg who are real business guys and fucking clown shoes that are fucking not scaling or growing and have bought themselves a very nice job thank you for attending my ted talk (laughs) so (laughs) so doubling down on that mission and core values right we all have our own (laughs) We all have our own core values, okay? So you know what yours are. And a lot of people make this shit up and it sounds nice and then they put it on a wall and their employees are looking at them like, you don't fucking do that. You know what I mean? And so it's very important that you you base your core values on who you are right now, right? They can change in the future. That's not a big deal. If you become this better version of yourself, great. Then you can modify the core values at that point. But you're the example of your company's mission and core values, so you have to reflect that day in and day out. This is no joke. My first core value is always we operate with integrity, and that's because of the past that I had in my 20s and because of what I did to my own life and how I affected my family. And now I got a second chance at that, so that's going to be my first core value every single time, integrity, right? And so, and then are they present? They, yes, they need to be up on the wall. As long as you're living by them, they need to be up on the wall or they need to be that first conversation you have when you start that, that Zoom meeting or that, that uh, team meeting. Everybody needs to say, okay, our mission statement is this. All right, John, what's our first core value? Sally, what's our second core value? Everybody should have that memorized and know it by heart. Okay, and then we should be giving out awards based on core values. You know, hey, John, you exhibited the hard work core value this this month. You put in some extra hours and you stayed late with a customer, whatever the case was. And and so we want to give you this award for that this month. You know what I'm saying? And you prop them up for displaying the core values. Recognition is, is, a, is a huge piece of it. And then, of course, you guys know because of the business that you're in, every one of your people better be swagged out at all times with cool gear and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And if if you do have that lifestyle and you are living – that mission and that core values, they're going to be proud to wear those colors. You know what I mean? And so that's a, that's a huge piece of it. So I call that Kodak compensation, opportunity development, operations, and culture. And that's when I go into a company, that's how I audit them. I look at all those things and wherever they're missing items along the way, then I fill that in those gaps. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't realize that people leave companies, not particularly for from compensation is because they hate their managers. Yeah, <laughs> that's, and that's a fact. I mean, um, we use predictive index when we hire new people just just to kind of make sure we know that the, the job fits the target. And uh, the rep was was talking about, you know, why people leave businesses. And yeah, people leave for higher compensation, but, um, you know, they, they don't like, you know, the culture or the or the the manage the management. And and, uh, and it goes back to kind of what things what Doug, Doug is saying is that you put some core values on the, on your wall. Um, or you talk about them, but then you don't actually follow them. That that happens a lot in companies. Now, the predictive index is huge too. It's the only per- personality testing or job testing that's 
not only, there's only like three of them, but it's one of the only ones that's backed by science and backed by real, real freaking science and not just rainbows and unicorns. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we use predictive index as well. We used it in our sales org. Um, you know, disk testing is one of the more common ones, but again, that, that definitely isn't as accurate as predictive index. But what I will say, something is better than nothing when you're qualifying people coming into the business and wise hire has a disc add on. And so if like you're looking for those like top level salespeople, it, you don't need top level salespeople. You need people that know how to follow instructions and wise hire has uh, several hoops that you can put them through. And if they can get through those hoops, then you know, they're a good candidate for almost any position. And that why, you, why is it W I S E hire? Uh, no, W I Z E. W-I-Z, wise hair. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. I'm always looking for new tools. That's one of my favorite recruiting tools right now. Yeah. Look, I, I want, I want to, I want to preface this. Like uh, typically I'm on board with these guys. I know all of you guys that are probably listening to this out on docs right now are like, um, yeah, man, uh, we're going to use predictive index and we're going to use Briggs Meyer and we're going to, you know, the reality of it is that most of you guys are still probably hiring on Craigslist and look, same, like guilty as charged. Do you know some, look, I am still very much of the mindset, and I hate to say this, but it's just like, do I have a feeling about this person? So our hiring process looks like everybody knows what the prereqs are to come work at our, our organization. And then we put them through step one, which is our, which is our hiring manager or HR person. And then they come and meet me. And now yeah. like, eventually I, I get it. Like one day you want to have a hundred people working for you. They can't always come meet you, but, and we, we're not going to get into this portion of it, but the whole like business partner replace yourself and this and this and that, but until you find that place in your journey where you're sitting at home, you know, and you can trust your staff and dick around doing podcasts. You know what I mean? I gotta, like, I gotta you're get still into that it. guy. I got to get What's into that? it. What's that? I got to get into yeah. it because I think it's the reverse. Like you okay, have a built out process, right? So these, these guys on docks and that are still running the boats and everything, they don't. So they need their time not to be wasted sitting in interviews, right? And so the less interviews that they can sit in with more qualified candidates, the better shape they're going to be in. And they can still get that gut feeling. They can still put them through the gut test. You know, the problem is, yeah. is normally they have to do 15 interviews to hire one person, which is an yeah. insane waste of their time. They're not getting their ROI on that because they could be out on a boat making a bunch of money, right? So if I can take it from 15 to five interviews because these people actually listen to the instructions and then yeah. I can do the gut test, then I'm in good shape. Right. Yeah. And I, and I get a much better ROI out of that time that I spent interviewing people. That's one of the most frustrating things and why people don't hire, even though they know they could scale if they hired is because they don't want to go through the interview nightmare. That's if you can get 15 people to even apply. <laughs> I um, can't shoot yeah, hundreds. <laughs> My name yeah. goes far and wide, bro. Everybody knows that I'm a weird guy who wears a weird hat and got neck tattoos. And you can tell your secrets, too, because I'm an open book like my boy Doug. Yeah. Listen, we are we are just about out of time on all of this. So um, a couple things. One, I want to thank you so much for coming out, uh, for coming in here, Doug. Like, I mean, just from operations to sales. Like, I mean, we could probably do another hour and 15 minutes uh, podcast I'm with, down. with all of the business action that you got <laughs> until I get into the consultancy game, guys, you want to hire Doug. If like, if any of this stuff sounds like remotely interesting or difficult or seems impossible, like if I wasn't just standing here shaking my head with everything Doug was saying, if I wasn't already implementing the stuff that he was doing and I was three years into the game, five years into the game, fuck it, 10, 20 years into the game and you're still operating with the three year, two year, this is how I've done it, this is how I've, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, bullshit. I don't care who you are. The things that Doug is talking about increases your bottom line substantially. And I don't even need for him to say it, I will say it for him. If he can't come in there and whatever it is gets you the ROI, let's just say that it costs $100,000 to bring in Doug and he's going to come in and say, well, if you implement this looking at your books, I'm sure there's some type of scaled way that he figures out how he charges you, but he's going to say, you're going to get this back. And I can't like SOP sales process, that stuff, if you're not doing it, it's 100% fucking worth it. If you're not going to get there and do it yourself, there is so much ROI, so much bottom line revenue on the things that he is talking about. I know 
because I implement it and I can show you. And again, I mostly give it back to my people because I'm like, Doug, I'm not about that life. I don't, you know what I mean? I don't, whatever. I'm not going to get into that. But the point being is, is if you have more revenue to attract more talent, then guess what? You are going to have 15 people coming through your door. Not, not you, not you, Greg, but you have a much different deal going on. But those of us working on the water, if you're implementing this stuff, there's bottom line revenue to increase wages, to give raises, to give bonuses, to write SOPs, to free up your time, man. I'm, I'm sorry. I know it was a super hard pitch for my boy, Doug, but I, when I, when I see something that's amazing, I just got to say it. You know, so, but thank you, bro. So how can people reach out to you, talk to you, contact you, your podcast, your website? Mm -hmm. They need all of the Doug Mitchell they can get. Yeah, of course. Um, So it's, it's definitely not a hundred (laughs) grand. It's actually free. Okay. (laughs) So if you, if you hit me up on any social media, it's all TX biz dad. That's TX B I Z dad. And um, that's, that's for a reason, right? Those are my three favorite things, Texas, my business and being a dad. And so, um, husband, I couldn't fit it in there. Sorry. <laughs> but anyway, can I say uh, something? In my opinion, it's worth a hundred grand, the shit that you're talking about. So I just I wanted to say, it. that's why I put that number on there, dude. Yeah. Well, over time, some clients may pay me that, but that's a whole nother deal. That's like ref share and <laughs> fractional CSO stuff. Right. But anyways, uh, but yeah, if you follow me on those channels, you're going to run into my podcast, which is building great sales teams. Right. And we give away a bunch of game on there for free. And then we interview, a lot of people, just like you guys did, you interview people that are really good at what they do, right? And it can provide value to your uh, audience. And that's what, honestly, 90% of my shows are interviews. I'm breaking down their processes, how they sell, you know, their frame of mind. And a lot of it is leadership and mindset, which is huge in order to lead a sales team, right? And so we're at like, I think we're coming up on 160 episodes, uh, maybe 158 came out today. We do three a week. So there's no shortage of value that I can deliver to you guys if you just follow me, right? And um, and then I'm going to start doing weekly webinars. And so I'm going to break down pieces of uh, my sales program and break them into webinars. And those are going to be free as well. So the game is there if you guys want it. Love it. I love it. And, 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 and what, was that, what was that website? Or I'm sorry, what's your email again? Just so we hit that back on the end there. Yeah. Uh, txbizdad.com or txbizdad on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, doesn't matter. That, that, bro, thank Absolutely. you so much, it was a man. Blast. So much value, man. Awesome. And hey, you can also reach out to Doug inside of our Facebook group. He is a member, even though he hasn't been in there because y'all aren't engaging enough. If you guys got questions for SOPs, for sales, you want to hit Doug's DMs, please him rather than me. Uh, <laughs> I had a guy t- reach out to me last night, Greg. He goes, I feel like I'm talking to a celebrity. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> hardly, my man, hardly. But you know what? My boy Doug is. Hit him up inside the group if you guys have any questions on sales or SOP. And as always, you beautiful SOBs, keep it awkward. All right.